I have to be honest. I have had a really hard time coming to the realization that I need to reshare this episode. Why? One word. Uvalde. Because just two days prior to the school shooting at Robb Elementary School in Texas, I was doing a lecture on the importance of social and emotional learning tools in schools, how the healing power of touch is part of that, and why mental health does matter. And then Tuesday came, and like you, our thoughts went to a pretty bad place. Again, you might have hugged your children tighter for the days to come, felt a range of emotions, but like any tragic news, days pass, stories die, and a holiday weekend takes our mind off of things. Well, not this time. Not again. So some of you may have heard this conversation with Scarlett Lewis, a single mom who lost her son Jesse in the Sandy Hook massacre in 2012. And since this episode first aired almost a year ago to this date, and coincidentally during Gun Violence Awareness Month this June, I have since joined her Choose Love movement as an ambassador. Because change needs to happen, but not through anger, not with thoughts and prayers, but with tools, nurturing, healing, and loving tools. Tools that have been proven to create the space for less violence, lower substance abuse, less bullying, and more space to make better choices healing, positive choices that perhaps could lead to more hearts still beating today. I'm not here to give you a lecture. I'm not here to share statistics of how many lives have been lost since I first aired this episode, or since Parkland, or Sandy Hook, or Columbine, or any of the other senseless acts that have happened both on and off campuses over the years. You can find that out yourself. What I am here to do is to amplify on Holistically Speaking. So as part of this two-part series on gun violence awareness, I give you the choice to choose love again and make a change. Hi, I'm Hilary Russo. Thanks for joining me for the Holistically Speaking podcast. I'm a certified holistic health coach and havening techniques practitioner, lover of great conversation, and of course, clever wordplay, holistically speaking. So welcome to an empowering place where my guests share their transformational stories of trauma to triumph through health, healing, and humor. It's the ultimate brain candy as we find out who we are, how we got that way, and what it takes to be a happy and healthy grown-up. And be kind to your mind. I'm glad you're here. Courage, gratitude, forgiveness, compassion. This is the formula that Scarlett Lewis created after her six-year-old son Jesse was murdered inside Sandy Hook Elementary School. You probably remember where you were that day in 2012 when you heard about the mass shooting that took the lives of 21st graders and six educators in Newtown, Connecticut. I certainly do. I imagine if you were a parent at the time, you hugged your kids even tighter that night and many nights to follow. And if you were a teacher, you wondered, could it happen inside your school next? I know I did. Since that time, I've taken more shooter preparedness classes than I care to think about, if you want the truth. But living in anger and upset will not lead to change. It never does. Love, on the other hand... Well, let's get back to that formula. Back to what matters. Scarlett Lewis lost a child that day, as many did. And from that, through the grief, she made a number of choices. One was choosing not to be a victim. She chose to take her power back and celebrate Jesse's life and message. 
because as she says, that is where the real growth and freedom occurs. She chose to respond differently because, well, Jesse said so. Really, he did. Through nurturing, healing, and love. We'll get to that in a moment. His words have created a movement that is Scarlett's mission going forward, a movement that has put Choose Love in 10,000 schools teaching the power of thoughtful response, love, and having fun. Scarlett believes if more emotional tools like this existed in the classroom and at home, it would have changed the outcome of that day for all the lives that were lost. All. Yes, including the shooter. On this episode of Holistically Speaking, Scarlett opens up about that day that she lost Jesse, but also what she gained in the years that have followed. The knowledge and know-how to heal, to forgive, to be courageous, and to be compassionate. To give children and adults simple tools that can be used every day in every aspect of our lives. You may recognize one of them. I talk about it enough. And it all comes down to a choice. A choice to choose love. Scarlett Lewis, it is such a pleasure to have you on Holistically Speaking. And I I just feel like I've known you forever. And it's just, I, I'm so happy to hold space for you to share your story and share Jesse with the world. And thank you for being here and choosing love always. Aw, thank you, Hillary. I feel the same way about you. So you and I met during the Haven Conference this year, and I'm so glad that you're, you know, bringing this into schools, making this part of the Choose Love movement uh, as a Haven practitioner and someone that really loves this work, knowing that you want to share the share havening with the world and with children to teach them and give them the tools to be kind to their minds. Um, but also, I mean, this goes back to your own story. I mean, you're a mom of a Sandy Hook child. You were the only single mom who lost their child during Sandy Hook. And you've turned this truly into a movement to recognize and honor your son, Jesse, and honor love just in general. So I'd love for you to elaborate on that. Uh, absolutely. Um, so, and, and really I took direction from Jesse himself, which is pretty amazing. When I came home to my house in Sandy Hook for the first time following the tragedy. Um, and if you're, if your listeners remember, it was when 20 first graders were murdered in two first grade classrooms and six educators and one of the worst mass murders in us history. So, um, I'm a little shell shocked myself. I return home. I see this message that Jesse had written on our kitchen chalkboard sometime shortly before he died. He wrote three words, nurturing, healing, love. Now they were phonetically spelled because he was in first grade and just learning to write. But what he meant to say was absolutely clear. And with research, we found that those three words are in the definition of compassion across all cultures. And I realized immediately that if the shooter had been able to give and receive nurturing, healing, love, the tragedy would never have happened. It was just so simple. Simple isn't always easy. And so I knew though that that was my purpose. I mean, I my life was going in a different direction before the shooting. Obviously, I was a single mom, sole provider, so I, you know, got up every morning early, commuted 45 minutes and the boys went here and there and I had to to drop the the my job and everything that I was doing before. I had to completely remake myself. And I thought, you know what, if my son is going to be murdered, then I'm going to do just that. And I'm going to be part of the solution because I have to, because I know that what happened at Sandy Hook was 100% preventable uh, all along the way. And no parent has to go through what I went through. Having a child head off to school one day and not come home. 
as his dad likes to say, go in with a book bag and out in a body bag. And so I did. I mean, here we are eight years later and every day, all day long, really what I do is spread that message of nurturing, healing, love in schools, homes, and communities, starting in the United States now all over the world. What to be able to make those choices after going through such a traumatic event, losing your child, being, like you said, the only single mom that went through this and seeing these words and knowing that you have a child that was so forward thinking, even at the age of, you know, even in the first grade at that very young age, learning those tools, it says something about the parenting, obviously, but where... Where was that change for you? Where did it go? And I mean, you have to go through the stages of grief, obviously. And I don't know if they ever really end. You know, we just learn to deal with things differently as time goes on. Where was the shift for you, truly? Where you're like, I I need, I can't be in the grief forever, that that anger and the sadness. I need to turn this around and and do something positive. It's so interesting because I, I feel like people want this, this moment when it, when it came yeah. on me and it was less like that, more of a journey, very painful. I felt every emotion going to his wake and his funeral. And then afterwards, I still feel pain. I still cry every day. Um, tears of loss and sadness, also tears of joy and excitement at, at what we're building in his honor. Um, but you know, I, I, I am very, I was very driven. I was given a purpose by Jesse, uh, to spread his message. I knew when I saw that message that, 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 that was for me, that he was handing me a baton of sorts and saying, okay, mom, Go do it. Go spread this. This is what we need. This is this is comfort for you, but it's also it's also where we need to turn in order to survive and thrive. Nurturing, healing, love. It's what we need. It's what would have prevented the tragedy. And mom, we need more of this. So go do it. <laughs> you figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'll help you though. And and I will say that he absolutely does help me every day. And so it was really a journey of trying to figure out what that looked like. Mm -hmm. And I was introduced to a doctoral professor at Western Connecticut State University. And, you know, he kind of introduced me to social and emotional learning. I'd never heard of it before. I'm not an educator. And I realized that there was a tremendous amount of research behind it that Decades of research showed that kids not only got better grades and test scores, higher attendance and higher graduation rates, but every aspect of their life was better. Less mental illness, less substance abuse, uh, less violence and anger, uh, less incarceration, less divorce rates. I mean, these are th these are long term studies. And so I realized that this was important. And when I started, it was in way less than 10% of US schools. And um, now it's a buzzword. And I like to think that it's a little bit of, you know, I help that a little bit. Um, but still, still, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. It's not checking off a box. It's actually incorporating these essential life skills, which is what they are, that you use <laughs> every day all day long in every aspect of your life to flourish. And uh, this is going forward forever in your life. And so, you know, it takes, it takes incorporating them into your lifestyle and practicing them every day. It's not enough to know them in your mind. You have to use them. And, and these are the skills and tools that help you have healthy and positive relationships. Healthy and positive relationships are the key to happiness. Relationships and connections are how we survive from mm -hmm. infancy mm -hmm. and, and how we thrive. It's so interesting how we're given this misperception, uh, even in our education system, that it's survival of the fittest, that Charles Darwin said something like that, and that's how you get ahead. But in actuality, 
Charles Darwin never said that. Uh, he actually concluded in his research that it would be survival of the most sympathetic. And by sympathetic, he meant altruistic, generous and mm. compassionate. And if you think about it, doesn't that make more sense? We're not competing against one another and pushing each other down. We are helping each other. We are nurturing each other. We are giving each other uh, uh, help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How did you get here today, Hillary? Because, because people loved you because somebody helped you, they guided you. And so really we need to start changing our view of the world into one that is compassionate. And, uh, and so that's where the choose love movement sprang from literally Jesse's message of nurturing, healing, love and teaching this concept in schools. You're so passionate. And I can imagine as a mother as well with Jesse, well, your children in general, there you instilled this in them right from the start, which was really beautiful to leave that when you saw that message, knowing that such a young child thought that way. I mean, just hearing you speak, um, it's as if Jeff Jesse speaks through you. It's really beautiful. That. Yeah, it really is. And uh, it, it's it's just lovely to listen to that and hear that. And it, it's as if you're nurturing as a mother to a much bigger audience, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I really gravitate to what you're saying, because uh, working with children as well, there is definitely there are tools that we can share with children so that they become healthier adults and to hear a mother who lost their child, not focus on the blame, not the guns, not the, uh, this person was, had a mental problem and this is why it happened, but really turn your focus to what we could do to create a much more compassionate, loving, forgiving caring, courageous world uh, is, is something that a lot of people, I would imagine you've got some pushback in that area, especially from other parents that lost their children during Sandy Hook. Well, it's interesting because after the tragedy, I kind of did sit back and watch how other people reacted. I didn't have to do any of those things, Hillary. Everyone else did those things for me. Everyone else polarized into pro-gun, anti-gun. There was enough rage and anger for everyone. And I just kind of felt like everybody was taking on Adam Lanza's energy. And people were doing things that were shocking to me. They were changing their Facebook thumbnails and and to F guns. And I was these were moms. And I was thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. You are just perpetuating that hatred and anger that caused this whole tragedy. We need a place where we can all go as human beings because that's really what we are that focuses on what we have in common. We need to bring each other together. Actually, we all need to be part of the solution. Uh, I think we realize now that waiting for our politicians to do it is uh, is not going to work. Hopefully, hopefully we're realizing that now. Um, I think that we, you know, we wait for our leaders to see where they're going and to fix things. But in all reality, they have children too. They want them to be safe. And if they could have fixed not only, not only school violence, but substance abuse, which is not at an all-time high, um, bullying, which continues it's upward spiral, spiral, not just with little kids, but with big kids, us big kids too. Um, suicide. And there's so many loneliness. I mean, we have so many um, pandemics going on now, um, side by side. 
and they continue to spiral out of control. If our leaders could do it, they would have. Nobody wants anybody to suffer. I firmly believe that. And so what it's going to take is all of us coming together. Polarization is not going to do it. Polarization Mm -hmm. leads to war. We are going to have to come together in, in what we have in common. And that is the want and need to love and be loved. Mm-hmm. We all want to belong. And, and I wanted to create a place where we could do that and where we could move forward and be part of the solution without, you know, kind of rising above all of the negativity and, and anger that, you know, we're kind of wired to pursue. We have a negative bias. We're born this way. We focus on the negative. If you go back to caveman times, the cavemen focused on saber-toothed tigers, and it was the one that saw them and ran that was going to pass mm-hmm. down those genes. And, and so today we focus on negativity. And that's where we're going without conscious awareness of this propensity. We are reactive and we're negative. And you see a lot of that today. And so we really need to uh, remind ourselves, educate ourselves, educate our kids that we have the ability as human beings, not every species does, but as Mm -hmm. human beings, we can overcome our negative bias and we can be part of the solution. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, I, and I, I believe that the Choose Love movement is a, a powerful force in, in that solution. Mm. I just want to share with folks that if you're just getting a chance to uh, listen to the podcast, we are talking with Scarlett Lewis. She is one of the beautiful mothers and parents of children who uh, we lost during the Sandy Hook tragedy. And her little Jesse was one of those sharing the message of love, encouraging us to choose love the way forward, which is the beautiful movement that Scarlett has created, choose love movement.org. I encourage you to check it out. We're going to share more on that because Jesse's birthday is June 30th. And I want to touch on that a little bit because you have this birthday bash to celebrate life, to celebrate love and the message of Jesse that he left in nurturing, healing, and love, uh, what this month means for you and anyone that's involved. And then we'll share a little more about what Choose Love really is. Well, we've been having a birthday bash for the entire month of June. Mm -hmm. And I invite everyone to go to our website, chooselovemovement.org, check out Month of Fun. You can check out everything. We have Uh, programming and resources for schools, homes, and communities um, that is no cost. Mm -hmm. So um, please go on and check it out. It's lifespan, next generation, social and emotional character development. Um, You will be amazed when you go on there, especially if you're an educator. We have programming for prenatal, infant, toddler, pre-K through 12th grade, homes and communities and businesses. So please go on. These are essential life Mm -hmm. skills, by the way, that we're not born with. (laughs) We aren't born with them, but we use them in every aspect of our lives and they're a direct path to flourishing. Um, And I'll tell you that I was 44 years old when Jesse was murdered and I looked for a solution, found one and realized very quickly, I don't have all these skills and tools. And so I've learned them through helping create this program. And I have to tell you, my life is exponentially better. Would I give it all back for one more second with Jesse? Of course, but that's not going to happen. So it is my gift to everyone. I'd love everybody to go on. Please spread the word. Mm -hmm. This movement is, has been spread by word of mouth. And we are now in over 10,000 schools in the United States, in every state. In fact, we're the most taught social and emotional learning program in a handful of states and 112 countries. Mm. And we keep growing. And it is all by 
word of mouth, people like you that understand, look, there's something that I can do. I need to be part of the solution and I can help spread this message, spread it on social media, talk about it. It's very powerful because in the last five years, this is the movement uh, that, that has spread the fastest and it's incredible. And it's because of viewers like yours. Mm. And so getting back to Jesse's celebration, his birthday is June 30th. And Jesse left a message for his older brother before he died. He wrote that message, Nurturing Healing Love, on the kitchen chalkboard. He's left a lot of messages and he's still with us. But another very poignant message that he left was for his older brother, who was 12 years old at the time. And he wrote a little note for him and left it folded on his desk. And JT found that after the tragedy. And it said, have a lot of fun. And it was such a beautiful note from a little brother to a big brother. JT now has it in his room in a frame. When I saw it, I thought I, my breath was taken away. And I thought, wow, that's for JT for sure. What a beautiful note for a little brother to leave for a big brother. But that is for us as well, mm -hmm. because while we are choosing love, so that nurturing healing love actually is a powerful and profound formula for choosing love. This can lead you to thoughtfully responding with love and taking your personal power back in any situation, circumstance, or interaction you will ever face. That's what we teach. That's the foundation of all of our programming. Um, that's really important because every choice we make every day mm -hmm. is based on a foundation of love or fear. And the outcome looks vastly different. But at the same time, we have to remember to have a lot of fun. That's why we were here. That's why we're here. Um, and when things are stressful and we're uncertain, a lot of times that's the first thing that goes out the door. And it really can't be because there's so much science behind the importance of all of us, especially mm -hmm. kids, but us big kids too, having a lot of fun. In fact, it's the two most important things that we do every day is thoughtfully responding with love and having a lot of fun. So this whole month, the theme is have a lot of fun and it all culminates. We've had some incredible partners. We have ambassadors in every state yeah. and internationally. So they've come and they've shared their gifts with us, which are incredible. You want to learn something, come and check out our ambassadors. And then we have this culmination from 6 to 8 p.m. on June 30th. Would love for everybody to join because this is just a place to come together and have a lot of fun and celebrate life while honoring and remembering. There's so much fear about honoring and remembering those we lost. In fact, nobody wanted to uh, to uh, mention the kids and in and, and Sandy Hook. And there was all this turmoil over whether we wanted a memorial or not. We still don't have one eight years later because People didn't want to be sad, but honoring and remembering is not about being mm -hmm. sad. It's about celebrating, celebrating the lives and keeping the memories alive, which is actually a happy and good thing. It makes us stronger. Mm -hmm. Yes, it takes courage, but it strengthens us. And so that's what we're going to be doing together on June 30th from 6 to 8. Go to the website, chooselovemovement.org, and please register. And we're going to have a lot of fun. I love that you're seeing it as a celebration. Even in grief, we celebrate. You know, when we think about uh, having to attend events like funeral shivas, it's it, and any any time where we lose or have a loss, there is a gain from it, and it's the knowledge, and it's the celebration, and it's the stories. And the fact that you're doing that and creating the space for that. And what happens after June 30th? It might be a celebration and a, a birthday bash for Jesse, but Jesse is a celebration every day. Everybody that we learn from is we should be celebrating what they leave in this world, right? So I it's so true. It enriches yeah. us. In fact, yeah. at uh, Jesse's funeral, uh, I remember planning this with my mom and she was saying, What do you want? And I said, I want a case of champagne. Mm -hmm. Because I want everyone to be toasting to Jesse. I don't want it to be a somber uh, time where people are sad and crying. Jesse 
will be there <laughs> in spirit. And, and he wants everybody to be laughing and celebrating and remembering and sharing stories. Mm. And so that's what we did. We passed out champagne glasses and we poured the champagne. We went through cases that night and we had a good time because that's what Jesse would have wanted. That's honoring and remembering. What is it going forward after June 30th? It's been a month of celebration and I know you're you're continuously building Choose Love and I'm I'm excited to be a part of it and join your ambassadorship. I really and just share more about ways that we can be kind to our mind and put those tools in child's hands and the educators and the parents and and share more on that way. But how how do things transition after June 30th for those who are like, "Oh, I missed the day. What can I do?" Oh my gosh, there's so much that you can do. Please go to the website. Um, If you just want to click on the contact button and say, hey, I'm here. I'd like to do something. What can I do? Um, That's great. Spread the word. That's the biggest thing. Mm. Please share on your social media. People are looking for these resources. They're desperate for them. Mm. In fact, social and emotional learning, kids that have social emotional learning in the classroom, remember, they're less likely to abuse substances it is a effective way to reduce and prevent bullying. Mm. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it uh, reduces the chance that your child will feel hopeless. And we know what hopelessness leads to. It leads to violence against yourself or someone else. Um, these are essential life skills that we all need. In fact, they're what CEOs are looking for. They're what Mm -hmm. universities are looking for, but you don't need to be going into a high power job or a, a university to want these skills and tools. These skills and tools are what help us Mm self-regulate. You're feeling anxiety. You're not feeling well. These help you self-regulate. They help you feel good. They help you take your personal power back, return your locus of control from outside, from feeling like things are happening to you and that you don't have any control to bringing that back inside, to having a beautiful, peaceful sense of calm and this feeling that you are in control, that you do make things happen, that you can do things. Mm -hmm. And our programming leads us through all of that, all ages. The, The fact that we can choose love. I remember, you know, some of my work takes me into prisons Mm -hmm. and uh, that's actually some of my favorite work because these guys often tell me, look, we never knew we had a choice. (laughs) All we ever knew was anger, hatred, and revenge. And this concept of being able to choose love in our own lives is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? And I, you know, I teach them the formula and it literally can change a life on the spot. It is so powerful. And the one thing that I love that brought us together is that you're now incorporating the tools that I use as a practitioner in havening. And I, I was so elated when I saw that you were on the panel when you're one of our speakers, because I I couldn't agree with you more on how we have the ability to change our thoughts, to change the landscape of our brain. And that was a tool I had to even learn over years, but, you know, knowing that this is now being included into your choose love movement and havening techniques and bringing that to the world and giving children tools, which we're already doing it on the adult level. We've been doing it for years. I'm a college professor and I use it with my students just to kind of calm their mind, get over test fears, the anxiety they deal with at the college level, you know, just being on campus. But why can't we start earlier so they become much more centered adults, knowing how to deal even with those little upsets and those little distresses, you know, so that when they move forward powerfully, they realize they can make choices. And the fact that you're in working with uh, inmates in, in prisons, you know, this nothing says we can't change at a later time in our lives, you know? Oh, you know what? I'm living proof. I mean, 
I have struggled in my life. I am diagnosed with PTSD. Mm. I have symptoms. And so I'm not, you know, if anybody's out there listening, thinking, oh, well, she, you know, it's not the case. I struggle. So I get it. And that's why I am constantly looking for powerful tools to to use on myself. Mm -hmm. And, And I use them on myself first. And if they work, then then I roll them out through the Choose Love movement. And havening is one of those incredibly powerful tools. And I, and I was so excited about it because it's so easy to do, washing the face, washing the hands, giving yourself a hug, and it will help you get back in control. And I need to use this. I, I need to use these skills and tools. I have PSD, PTSD, so I understand kids and adults that struggle. And I'm just here to say that there are things that you can do that can help you between stimulus and our response. And that's thoughtful response, not impetuous reaction. There's a space. And in that space lies our our freedom and, and our strength to choose how we respond. Um, And in our response lies our growth and freedom. And so the way that we say that in our program, in the Choose Love Movement program, is that we can't always choose what happens to us in life. And uh, boy, isn't that the case? Because I would Mm -hmm. never have chosen for my six-year-old son to be shot dead in his first grade classroom. However, we can, even in that situation, choose how we respond. And that's where we take our personal power back. Otherwise, yes, we are victimized. And I tell you what, I did not want to be another victim of of the shooter, the former student uh, whose mother taught at the school, who was this mass murderer, became this mass murderer because he was so hurt that, and he did not have the social and emotional intelligence to be able to thoughtfully respond to the difficult, abusive, isolating things that happened to him in his life, that he thought that the only way out was to kill himself and take as many people with him. I was not going to be another one of his victims. Mm -hmm. The only way that I could take my personal power back was through my thoughtful response. And I'll tell you, a huge thing that helped me with that was forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Forgiving him. I had to do that in order to take my personal power back. That's part of our formula. This is your formula, right? Mm -hmm. This is a formula that you you have developed. There there are many formulas out there that can help us on that road to, to a healing world and to a world of love. So this choose love movement is one formula that is working for many. And if it is the choice you make to choose the choose the love movement, beautiful. And I love that you also mentioned it's in action because isn't everything in action? Uh, You know, Dr. Rudin, when I had my conversation with Dr. Steve Rudin, who was one of the developers of Havening, he says, it's not well-being, it's active well-being. There's a big mm-hmm. difference. So we need to be in action because action is how we make change and how we move forward powerfully. So I uh, love that. I'm writing yeah. it down. I, I did too. <laughs> I'm constantly <laughs> learning from my teachers. Oh, you know? absolutely. Me too. Uh, Constant. Yeah. I love it. So I, I want to play a little game with you for a second before we close things out, before Ooh. we leave people into the world, put you back into this beautiful place where you can share love with more people through Jesse's voice. Uh, I want to do a little word association with you. Cool. And a game yeah. that we play in school too. So a fun <laughs> game. I want to throw out one word. And these are words that you've mentioned during our chat today. And in that Come back with just one word, the first word that comes to mind. And let's see what let's see what's on Scarlett's mind with these words that she uses quite often. All right, I'm rolling up my sleeves. <laughs> Do you need a haven first? Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. up here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, let's start with the, the three most important ones that we've we've been saying. Um, nurturing. Guiding. Healing. Essential. Okay. I'm going to move it around a little bit. Courage. A muscle. 
Mm. Forgiveness, power, gratitude, empowering, compassion, loving, choice, the way, fun, delightful, mm. connection, love, mother, beauty, purpose, service, love. choice. Mm. Beautiful. Love that. Wow. I really had to think. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, You know, I was curious where you would go with those. And I always am with my guests, but this was so powerful. I'm so, so elated to have shared space with you and talking about that. And I can't wait to be more part of this movement and, and um, just embrace it more and, and, become one of your ambassadors to love. I mean, I, I'm an ambassador to love anyway. So I'm just, you are. <laughs> thank you, you are already. That's why you're a yeah. natural fit. Oh, thank and you. there is a lot of trauma out there right now. Yeah. And it's really important that we get these incredibly, even life-saving trauma techniques into the hands of the kids because they can do them themselves. And it's the better choice for them and and for us and for our future as a world. So this is all happening in perfect timing. And I'm so grateful to you, Hillary. I'm so happy to have met you and to have you in my life. And as well as your listeners, thank Mm -hmm. you so much for sticking with it and for being with us and for listening to the message. And I just welcome you to the Choose Love movement. It's there for all of us to be part of the solution for our active well-being, thoughtfully responding with love in some way and having fun with your kids every day, Um, looking into their eyes here. I'll leave this. I'll leave you all with one one thing that I learned um, the last day that I saw Jesse. Uh, it was just another day. I, I woke up. I, I walked him outside. He was meeting his dad at the end of the driveway. I turned around to give him a hug. And I noticed that he had written on the side of my car with his little fingernail in the frost. I love you. And he'd drawn hearts on all my windows. And I was present with my kids. I practiced being present in the moment. I I am human, but I was consciously aware of being present with them, not on my phone. Thank goodness that was kind of before phones, um, but but not on the TV. In fact, we didn't have a TV. Uh, we sat around the table. We played games. We rolled around on the floor. We... Uh, had fun together. We looked into each other's eyes. And so that led me to to that moment where I was present. I knew that that was a special moment. And I I ran into the house, got my phone, positioned Jesse by the message, took, took a picture. And that was the last time I ever saw him. That was the last picture ever taken. And I got a picture of my goodbye message. I love you. And I wanted to share that because because it's really important that we practice being present in our lives. It is the way to live our lives with the fewest regrets, being present with the ones that you love because not, and not necessarily because you never know, um, but you get more enjoyment and appreciation out of life. You know, you think that you're going through life so quickly and so rattled and everything's going on and, and, uh, and you're overwhelmed, Mm -hmm. slow down, Mm -hmm. be in the present moment, because right here is all you have. You don't have anything else, but right here, right now with your kids, enjoy it. That's the meaning of life. And then you can live your life with the fewest regrets. And uh, I just, I just wanted to leave that gift. And, and the, and the one other thing that I'll say is that Jesse went to school then and uh, very shortly after the um, the tragedy occurred, Jesse actually saved nine of his classmates' lives before losing his own. Um, he stood up to the shooter. Nine young kids are you know older kids now uh, 
uh, 14, 15 year olds are walking around today because of Jesse. And I say that because we all have Jesse's courage. Mm. <laughs> His courage is a guiding light to me. I feel like if Jesse can do that, I can definitely stand up in my own life. I can get on this podcast and talk with you. I can share his message uh, across all platforms and stages um, because we all have the capacity for Jesse's courage. And that's the courage to put our best foot forward, to do the right thing, to be our authentic self, to face our fear instead of resisting and avoiding it and even numbing ourselves. We have that capacity for courage. Courage is key. Uh, It takes courage sometimes to get out of bed and put our best foot forward. But remember that you're modeling every day, all day long for those people in your life, what choosing love looks like that helps you rise to the occasion. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so, so much for listening. Thank you for being a light and sharing Jesse's light going forward. And we will continue to celebrate Jesse, not just on the 30th of June, but every day as we live our lives choosing love. So thanks. Thank you so much, Hillary. To connect with Scarlett, to find out more about Choose Love, and to bring the movement and the program to your school or community, visit the website at chooselovemovement.org. I hope you'll join us and share the message. And if you would like to learn more about Havening and how I can support you on your healing journey, just reach out to me and let's just have a conversation. A complimentary discovery call is my gift to you to be kind to your mind. Just go to hillaryrusso.com slash Havening and we'll go from there. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, and even social media at Hillary Russo. I am always listening. If this conversation has touched, moved, and inspired you in any way, or you know someone who would find value in what we shared, consider paying it forward and passing it along to just one person to listen. Your share can make a difference in someone's life. I can promise you that. Holistically Speaking is produced by Alan Seals with music by Lip Bone Redding and recorded on Squadcast. Thanks for listening. Choose love. And as always, remember this. Be kind to your mind and don't forget to laugh. On the next Holistically Speaking, how to heal through humor, creativity, and advocacy with my friend Christina Filler and her personal connection to gun violence as well as mine. Stay safe.